Greetings and salutations, everyone. Today we'll be discussing the fate of Queen Ajara. It took a while and much speculation, but we can finally breathe a sigh of relief now that the patch Rise of Ajara is on its way. With it comes the long-awaited and anticipated encounter and defeat of our favorite and only Naga Queen. Originally, when making this video, I based it around the idea that Ajara wouldn't die, but I missed a few lines of broadcast text which made things different in my speculation here. Before I get into the spicy spoiler section, let's cover some things about Ajara and her Naga. Ajara was once queen of the Highborn Empire. She was at the top of her game of claiming Azeroth for her and for her people. They had the Will of Eternity, a font of great power at their fingertips, allowing them to perform great deals of magic. But their constant of use of this magic drew the eyes of the Legion. Savius would be enthralled by Sargeras and his legion and would approach Ajara with a gift, the promise of a union with the Burning Legion and their god, Sargeras. Infatuated with Sargeras and his Burning Legion, they struck a deal to bring the Dark Titan to Azeroth through their Well of Eternity, and the belief that he would make Azeroth a world fit for her by ridding the lesser graces completely from it, and that Sargeras would take Ajara as his bride. Ultimately though, not everyone agreed with this world, or her plans, which resulted in the war called the War of the Ancients, one of the largest scale wars that had ever taken place on Azeroth's soil. The climatic events of the war would lead to the Sundering, when the Highborn of Old's beloved Well of Eternity became too chaotic and broke the continents of Azeroth apart. Ajara and her kingdom at the epicenter of this catastrophic event would soon be drowned in the chaotic ways of the Sundering. But they would not be claimed by death. Instead, Ajara once again bargained with a mighty force and called favor from the old god of the deep, Nazoth, to save herself and her loyal subjects. They would be transformed in the race we know them today as the Naga. Evolved into a form where they would be one with the sea and survive the Sundering of the world. Ajara would remain a queen, but not a slave to Nazoth. Together, the two would plot for the rebirth of the Black Empire, and to do so, she would have to free the Old God of the Deep from his titanic bindings. Slowly, the Naga would scheme and rebuild the new empire, fitting for their queen. We would have characters like Lady Vash join with Illidan and help with the Burning Legion. This also helped create that rift between the Sindorai and the Alliance. We would have the events of Bajir, where the Naga almost successfully captured the elemental lord of water, Neptalon, for their nefarious plots. We would also have the events of Azuna, where the Naga tried to get the Tidestone of Golganoth. And now we come closer in the present, where Ajara used Prophet Zul and Priscilla Ashbane as her cronies, to weaken the Horde and the Alliance. In a lot of ways, Ajara is yet another character who has stirred the many events of World of Warcraft. Now that we've covered our history of Ajara, it's time for some spoilers, folks. I understand if you feel it's too soon to dive into that hot and spicy spoiler soup, and I hope that you come back later when this is all live, if you're not interested in the section now. Maybe we'll be dead on with some of our ideas, or be completely wrong, but until then I look forward to your return here. But for those of you who don't mind spoilers, let's dig in, in 3, 2, 1, spoiler time. So that brings us to today's events where Ajara and her Naga have been extremely active in freeing Nazoth from his prison, but once more the Alliance and Horde have been joined together to end such an event from occurring. We venture to the Eternal Palace of Ajara where we deal with her minions joined by Lorthamar Theron, Shana's Feathermoon, Jaina Proudmoore, and First Arcanus Thalrissra. Based off the broadcast text that you see here, First Arcanus Thalrissra and Lord Admiral Jaina Proudmoore during the final stage of the encounter seal Ajara in her own palace, but that doesn't stop Ajara from completing her task. She uses the very heart of Azeroth we spent the entire expansion empowering to break free the Old God of the Deep. The King of Diamonds finally made to be shown as an unwilling pawn. Though Ajara's own fate is left up in the air, which I presume will be revealed in an amazing cinematic, after a hectic boss fight, there's a good chance that Ajara will die. However, I am optimistic that with a patch named Rise of Ajara, this won't be the case. Nazoth is indefinitely going to be free, and this does not bode well for Azeroth. 
However, hope is not yet forsaken, as the two factions of the Alliance and the Horde are on the crisp of banding together to face Nazoth for the sake of Azeroth. It is important to remember, though, that this is dialogue from the PDR, so things are subject to change, as even voice dialogue at times don't make it alive. And Taurus, anyone? They still have yet to test it, so it's up in the air. So here is three possibilities that might happen in the cinematic when Ajara is defeated. One possibility is that the Black Blade of the Empire, Zalatath, is used to seal away Ajara into the dagger. This was an idea I touched on that Sylvanas might do with the dagger, but since I believe she passes the dagger to Thanos, it's no longer within her possession. For now at least. It's always possible that something else might use the dagger to entrap Ajara into it. Possibly any of the characters I listed that are present here. It's also important to remember that Nazoth claimed the dagger will now serve under his will, now that it is no longer under Zaltaf herself. Just imagine Sylvanas popping up at the end of the raid in the somatic and using the dagger for herself. It would allow Ajara to continue as a character and also be a threat in the world in a way. A second possibility is that they managed to somehow transport Ajara to the very same prison that she's been trying to free Nazoth from. It would be a pretty ironic and a pretty gruesome fate to suffer the same fate as her master, and she could very well even be killed for her failures by Nazoth when in there. Though I will be honest, I'd prefer it to be some kind of switcheroo somehow, and Nazoth to leave Ajara to rot in the prison cell he once was left in. As we know, by the end of the raid, Nazoth is free, or is on the verge of being free. That'd be pretty dang cruel for Nazoth, and would be a really good example as to why you shouldn't put trust in an old god. A third possibility is that Nazoth somehow intervenes and pulls a Archimonde to a Gul'dan, and teleports Ajara out of there to enact a next stage of their plan. They did compare Ajara as the Gul'dan of this expansion, but that could really mean anything. Plus, it would be interesting to see Nazoth treat Ajara with some form of reverence or respect, since we all assume that the two would backstab each other at some point. There's always a chance for an entirely different outcome, but I do believe this raid will end with Queen Ajara still being active somehow. If not, then I imagine she'll just be dead, which, in my opinion, is a tad more drool. I do like it when characters get a second shot, but it's used to advance the story. I honestly think they did this beautifully with Gul'dan and Legion, which is fitting because, again, they compared her to him back at BlizzCon in 2018. With a character like Ajara and the patch's name, Rise of Ajara, I honestly hope that they don't kill her off in patch 8.2, but given we just had a raid with the last major boss, also isn't killed, Jaina. It might anger people that they once again didn't get to kill the final boss of the raid, so I suppose we'll just have to see. It would be interesting if they do keep this trend of the Warbringers not dying, since Jaina, Ajara, and Sylvanas are all Warbringers of this expansion. There is a lot of interesting stuff going on here, though. Lorthamar, Jaina, Chandras, and Thalrissa putting aside their differences to ensure a future for both their factions. Lorthamar being down with the Honorable Horde, and people thought he wouldn't be. Ha! Nazoth is on the verge of going free and possibly being the first old god to successfully do so. It's just, 8.2 is shaping to be very impactful and interesting of a patch, and I hope that you and many others give it a try. But, those were my thoughts on the fate for Queen Ajara. What are yours? Do you agree with some of my outcomes, or do you think something else might happen? Lately, I've been on a roll with some of my speculations, so let's see just how accurate I am with this one. Come and join me on the Discord, we would love to have you for more discussions. Maybe follow me on Twitter to hear me more often. Join me on Twitch to see me play the video games, though I am on break till Reforge is out. Or maybe support me on Patreon. A little help goes a long way, and I would greatly appreciate it. All of these are in the description down below, as well as some other things. But until next time, my friends, see ya!